Uh, I kind of need a filler upload, so I'm doing this. I am going to teach you guys. Well, let's give you some advice on how to make nice 3D thumbnails with uh, paint on it. Anyway, let's do it. This is my second take doing this, so it kind of seems like. Uh, probably just don't drum it up. Now, what you want to do is you want to find a part that has some interesting aspects to it. Like, for example, this part, you've got the club set monsters, you've got the background, stuff like that. Which is honestly what I might use. Probably better to just experiment with different kind of parts. Like, take multiple screenshots, see which parts look the best. Like, stuff like this. Like, if you can get a moment where, it's, where it looks absolutely stunning like this, so that might be the one I use. Now most of the time, yeah, when you're looking for parts, make sure they have some specific detail to them that's recognizable, like this black hole. Well, I'm just gonna use like other examples, like club set monsters, those are very, very good. But kind of make the ones, but any details, like interesting structures or background aspects, if you can do that, etc., are really like, extremely good. Another thing I kind of noticed is I'm trying to get parts that look too clustered. Like if they're too clustered or it's at an odd angle that makes making the thumbnail extremely difficult. Start by kind of experimenting like framing. Like this part does look a bit empty for a thumbnail, but I'm gonna go and grab the other one. Honestly, I might just use this part. I'm just gonna grab a kind of aspect of it because the inside uh, I kind of uploaded a version of the uh, background where it's just the background. So. so that's pretty much the same part. I'm gonna leave that for later because I do have kind of cool light. So before you, you don't want you don't really want to start editing the background. Like you want to frame it obviously, like you know, rotate it a bit, which is what I'm gonna do. Keep some interesting aspects in the background, like you know, you got the flame in the corner, you got you know that kind of stuff. And then you just want to grab out a photo to font or really any. I just prefer to font because you can actually preview what the uh, text is by just going to preview. I'm probably not gonna touch the color. Like I'll put it like a basic sort of color, but like maybe like an orange. Maybe I'll just use gradient. You can use gradient, but it can be a bit difficult sometimes. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't use it for like blank color. You don't really use it for like shadowing. That's at least what I do. Yeah. I'm just gonna center up the text for a quick object. Okay. Now it's kind of a squished font, so I do kind of want to stretch it out a bit. There we go. So then you got kind of what you want to do with your text. And this is a important part, I reckon. I'm gonna go back to screenshots. I'm gonna grab that. The uh, real screenshot of the background without any tweaking. Uh, where is it? There you go. Add as a layer. There we go. Now this is a little trick that I like to do. I'm pretty sure everyone does this. But what we're gonna do, grab a block design. Like I'm gonna grab this one for example, because it's got like some interesting aspects to it. You got kind of a flame. Grab it, and we want to do. I'm just gonna put that on the bed for the time being. We want to go to here and paste. So kind of stretch it out a bit, make sure it covers the text. Try and keep the majority of the aspects, you know, inside the text, like the interesting aspects. I'm gonna try and keep this block here inside the text, like that. I'm gonna grab a couple of stuff from here. I just duplicate these and drag them across. And then this, go in here, blend mode. No matter what software you're using, make sure you use the blending modes. Multiply, additive, multiply makes it darker. Additive kind of adds the effect. No shit, it adds to the effect. And you can kind of add different sort of effects. Like you can add like a glow, then a difference, then a negotiation or whatever. I'm gonna go with color bulge, I reckon. Cause that looks quite nice, I reckon. And then you can kind of duplicate it to give it like a stronger kind of effect, but you can kind of, you know, use different effects to make an effect, you know what I mean? Play around with your layering of it. Maybe not like that. <laughs> that was actually, again, really the thing with making thumbnails is it's just tweaking. You need to just play around so you find something that works. And then once you're done with that, you just want to go into the, this, make sure you select the text, make sure you select inside the text as well. Go to here. Do it all again. That's probably a quick way of doing this, but I don't know. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna 
kind of color balance it to make it match everything else. There we go. I think that looks quite nice, I can't lie. I might adjust kind of the size of it and all that, but yeah, maybe I'll add some kind of space background effect. Which way is this gonna come in? Whoa, did you see that segue? That's freaking insane. Now what you wanna do is you wanna just grab an aspect and try and like put it over the text. I'd say that looks pretty good for the text because you kinda of have that background kind of effect, you have the stars and the text. Basically put elements from the level into your text. Just using like layering and all that kind of jazz. Another thing I do like to do, once you kind of got an outline, I like kind of adding like another sort of outline. To have like some kind of shadow effects, so it's not like a shadow, but like something like this. And then you just want to go in here and then you just kind of play around. Make sure it's always, make sure it's always darker. Now, now that we're done with the text, which is the hardest part by far, you just want to start to kind of fiddle around with the background. Now, when it comes to foregrounds and these like stuff from the level, again, for example, a block design, a spike, or even, I'm going to use this structure onto the side, even though it's not in the screenshot, I'm still, I, I'm going to use it and try and match the, yes, the, there we go, that was actually quite easy. There's make it bigger. I don't really need to do this, but I found it helps when there's not a lot of stuff in the foreground. Well, it's not. I mean, it feels a bit empty. I feel like kind of adding stuff to the foreground can help a fair bit. Another thing you can kind of do is you can add saw blades. Like, so when it comes to just elements in the foreground, saw blades, cloth set monsters, stuff like that are really good. Like, yeah, cloth set monsters are pretty basic. Pretty much every thumbnail has them nowadays, but no. They're popular for a reason. The reason is they're quite good. There we go. So yeah, I feel like this corner is kind of fine. So yeah. And the note, last thing I recommend is a, is vignettes. Now there's two places, two ways you can do vignettes. You can chuck them behind it, like the text and everything, to kind of just kind of like dull the background a bit. Then I like to add another one just, just near the top, kind of tidies it up a bit, in my opinion. Sometimes you can kind of change the color of it to match it, but it's not really my cup of tea, but uh, doesn't look that bad. Yeah, so that's how, that's kind of how you, yeah, so that's pretty much how you make thumbnails, just a whole lot of experimenting. Why don't one more thing down the bottom, just to kind of tie it together. Oh, <laughs> Wow. There we go. That's, and yeah, that is pretty much how you make a thumbnail. Uh, again, it's really just a whole lot of playing around. It's not a real, like, straightforward way. It's not like a set way, like, you have to do it this way. But these are just techniques I've found that help out. Anyway, uh, if you need an Andromeda thumbnail, hello. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, do all that. Uh, yeah, bye.